Hey, I'm Will Bradford, and this is Black in the Core. The theme of today's episode is what is life like right now in New York City in March of 2021? Some things at the moment in New York City aren't what they once were. A big way it's different now is how New Yorkers are getting around town. In normal times, the subway is what makes New York function normally. Without it, the whole New York City lifestyle breaks apart. Even if you don't use it, the people who serve you probably do. New Yorkers use it to go all over the place. One price for any ride, no zones based on distance, so New Yorkers move around their city a lot. Before this whole mess, it ran 24 hours a day. Now, much less people are using it, and for different reasons. First of all, they're worried about getting exposed. Crime has gotten worse down there, the results of fewer riders. When it was crowded, there were lots of people around to intervene in case there was trouble. Now, considering the state of things, there's just not enough police down there. Mentally ill people seem to be running the place. Then you have people who just want to ignore the current guidelines for riding the subway altogether. Like last week, I was on the train and everyone was wearing a mask like they were supposed to. Then this guy gets on the train and he has no mask. And everyone's looking at him like, what's going on with this fool? And then he decides, of course, to sit directly in front of me. So, <laughs> you know, it's just unsafe. New Yorkers are using other ways to get around. You know, there's a taxi, there's a bus, which is great because you can actually look out the window. There's the city bikes, electric scooters. And my personal favorite are rollerblades because then you get to get around the city and also get a workout at the same time. So what about eating and drinking in New York City right now? Until last year, eating out has always been a huge part of the New York City lifestyle. Why is it that New Yorkers eat out so much? Well, people are busy. They don't want to cook after working all day when the city offers so many amazing choices in every neighborhood. You can get around the clock service with late night delivery. And a good number of New Yorkers have small kitchens and don't want to be bothered with cooking. Right now, eating and drinking is restricted. Restaurants have to close at 10 p.m. Indoor dining is limited to 25%, and that's being raised to 35% soon. But a lot of New Yorkers still don't want to eat inside restaurants anyway. Bars are totally closed. And now, more New Yorkers are cooking for themselves. But getting groceries has its own unique challenges in the city. Most of us don't have cars here. We can't just drive to the grocery store, buy food for the week, put the bags in the trunk, and drive home. We have to carry our groceries back on the public transit or by foot. And at the end of the day, the groceries are expensive here anyway. So what about shops and services? Most stores are open, but they are suffering. Foot traffic is way down because a lot of the commuters that used to come into the city for work haven't returned yet. And New Yorkers are staying more in their local neighborhoods than coming into Manhattan. People are reluctant to ride the subway, like I said before. So non-residential neighborhoods have fewer visitors. Lots of people are still avoiding shops in general, except for essential items. And there's hardly any tourists. Certain business districts depended on tourists, such as Soho, which had a huge retail scene before. After the sudden drop in tourists, though, so many shops and restaurants have closed permanently. A lot of them were longtime family businesses. I hope that the city's retail scene can bounce back quickly after things get back to normal. But nothing can replace the family businesses that were victims of this whole situation. Another big thing that has changed about living in New York City is the lack of events that bring people together. Large public events are one of the most enjoyable things about life in New York City. So many public events have been scaled back or don't exist at all right now. Music events, sporting events, dance performances, neighborhood street fairs. Here's a big one. Parades and festivals. The Dance Parade, Mermaid Parade, Labor Day Parade, Thanksgiving Day Parade, Puerto Rican Day Parade, St. Patrick's Day Parade, and so many other different ethnic parades. I can't even think of them all. One of my favorites is the Labor Day Parade, AKA the West Indian Day Parade. Millions of people attend this festival of dancing, music, and food that celebrates West Indian carnival culture. And finally, 
How has the entertainment and nightlife scene changed in New York City? On a positive note, there are some activities that are more enjoyable for New Yorkers now because of the drop in tourists I mentioned earlier. The museums are open and less crowded than normal, so that's great. You can get a closer look at the art and fewer people means a less stressful experience. The Met and MoMA are great right now. I went to the Whitney recently and made a video about one of the exhibitions, so make sure to check it out. Another positive thing about living in New York right now, we've been enjoying the tourist attractions for ourselves without the crowds. Things like the Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building, that we used to avoid at all costs are now peaceful places to check out for the first time. One of the most terrible changes to living in New York this past year has been the obliteration of nightlife. New York has always been a 24-7 kind of city but not anymore. The city that never sleeps is quiet at night. Bars, dance clubs, comedy clubs, live music venues, and late night dining are all closed for now. Even the theater lights of Broadway are dark right now. Lots of people are out of work because nightlife was a big part of the economy. It was definitely a big part of what made living in New York City so much fun. So why am I and other New Yorkers staying? I can understand why so many people have left New York City. I mean, it's obvious. So why am I staying and other New Yorkers staying? Because I love this city through thick and thin. If you can stay, I would stay because it's gonna get better. When this whole situation settles down, New York City will be more vibrant than before. Do you think New York City will come back better than ever or not? Thanks for watching my video. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I'll be posting more videos on life in New York City on this journey back to normal. We'd love to get your thoughts, so let us know in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my channel for future videos on New York City and hit the notification bell to receive more updates.